What's going on, everybody? It's your boy Broadway Joel, the voice of Dominican boxing, and today we're doing something a little bit different. Well, not too different. I am interviewing a former Dominican boxer, but this isn't somebody who necessarily had the big, big name and the championships and all that, but he was one of my personal favorite fighters back when I was first getting into boxing around... I want to say I started getting really, really deep, deep into boxing, 2008, 2009. That's when I really was diving into boxing. And there were few Dominican fighters out there. We all know Joan Guzman, the greatest Dominican boxer of all time. You know, he was around. But um, then there's uh, also Delvin Rodriguez was around. And the good thing about Delvin Rodriguez is, man, this guy had such a fan-friendly style man like it was so entertaining and it was and he would fight often at least it felt that way i gotta check his boxer but it almost felt like he felt three four times four three four times a year he was always on espn friday night fights and uh it just a a, a guy that was easy to root for to be honest with you uh didn't have the big promoter didn't you know wasn't the super fastest wasn't didn't hit the hardest but he always provided entertainment. And I, honestly, it's an honor to interview him. Uh, again, believe it or not, some people may look at him as a journeyman, as a low-level contender throughout his career. I looked at him as a great, uh, entertaining fighter who sometimes had decisions go against him that, you know, let's just say a lot of people didn't think, uh, you know, he should have he should have lost. But that's the name of the game. And yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to 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 it, talking with him and and seeing him uh, asking him questions. I'm definitely just naturally curious, you know, not even on some journalistic stuff. Just naturally curious about how he, he feels his career was handled, uh, what he wish he would have felt differently, which fights that were close fights he felt he won. Uh, and yeah, what, what's he up to now? You know, a lot of times we get these fighters, they have their career, they retire, and we don't know nothing about them after that. You know, like, what is Lennox Lewis doing? I have no idea, right? You don't know. But, you know, if I had an interview, you can ask and get into detail and all that stuff. So I'm definitely looking forward to this. I text him the link. Let's see. Maybe he's running a little bit late. Uh, yeah, maybe he's running a little bit late. I'm going to text him right now and see if he can hop on. Uh, how did you get in contact with him? I remember you said you was trying to get this interview in the past and it didn't fall through. Uh, yeah, there's been a few times where he has been either out the country or busy, or and there was at one point where he had opened up a nightclub, so he was kind of like real busy to give interviews. So really, it was more of that. And then, honestly, I'm busy myself. So if if the day I'm trying to interview you, you can't do it. And you don't have a set date in your mind when we could do it. I kind of just put you at the back burner and, and whoever else is available. That's what I try to do. So I finally, you know, our schedules matched up. And and uh yeah, he 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 asked me, he was like, Hey, can we do it, you know, today at at, at uh eight o'clock? I was like, Yeah, that, that seems to work for me. Uh let's just see <clears throat> if he can hop on. Not sure it says he read read my message. Uh, the link it hasn't shown that he's read my message, so we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, Carlos Adamos va a pelear con el italiano Etinosa Alia. I I haven't heard that to be honest with you. I have not heard that. Uh, yo no escuchado eso, but if you if you know. <laughs> You got that news. Hey, man, honestly, I literally got home from work not too long ago. So uh, has that news broke? I spoke to Carlos Adamas, uh, was it yesterday? 
I spoke to the Carlos Adama is pretty recent, so uh, that's not what he told me. Again, unless unless things have changed since we last spoke, whether it was yesterday, I think it was, I think it was yesterday. Matter of fact, it was either yesterday or the day before I spoke to Carlos Adama. Uh, that's not what he told me. But hey, is it vi una entrevista y él dijo que sí. Okay, hey, está bien. <laughs> Yeah, come on. Uh, Jamal Charlo said that that fight's not happening. He said that he he hasn't been in no negotiations and that he hasn't spoken to Al Heyman. And he doesn't understand why people saying he's fight, fighting Canelo's night. And he said that until he hears from one of those people, he's not going to, you know, say he is. <laughs> Which, thank God, man. Nobody wants to see it. His brother... Who was the more focused one? The the people, you know, more accomplished one too. He's undis he was undisputed. Couldn't beat him. Now you're gonna get this guy who clear I mean to his own admission. Well, I don't even want to say it. has he admitted it? I mean, I don't want to go by what the WBC says, but clearly had some mental issues, had a, a bad performance against. Jose Benavidez, and then you're gonna give this guy a title shot? I, I I don't know, man. I don't know. All right, but hold on, I got my man right here. Yeah, mano, pero que es un curso para entrar aquí. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, uh, you had a little trouble getting in. That's what happened. Yeah, yeah. No, nah, no, nah, we go. We got you here now. So that's all that matters. Uh, first of all, I want to say thank you so much for for giving me the interview more importantly and to let you know that back when i was first getting into boxing uh as you know there wasn't a lot of dominican boxing on tv yeah, yeah. yeah. it was pretty much you and joan guzman and, and 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 your style and the fact that you were very active the fact that you fought on free tv often on espn made you my favorite dominican boxer over joan guzman joan guzman's my man for sure I think he's the greatest Dominican boxer of all time. But back when I was growing up, you were my favorite Dominican boxer. And that's coming from the voice of Dominican boxing. Oh, yes. That's what's up. That's what's up, man. You know, um, yeah, like you said, back in those days, um, not too many Dominican boxers that, that were shiny, you know what I'm saying, that were out there. Uh, John Guzman was there for a little bit. And then he, um, he, I think he retired. He made a couple, you know, big errors that cost him a lot. But yeah, I can't take that. You know, he was a great, a great, um, way different style. You know, he was a very defensive fighter. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah. out of respect for him, you know, um, the guy is a, is a great, is a, is a good person in and out of the ring. Yeah, for sure, for sure. I know him personally, uh, and he th that's for sure. He definitely is a good person. Yeah, in, we hung out a couple of times. I, 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 I travel to Dominican a lot, but, and you know, we met up a couple of times, so. Yeah, um, nothing, nothing but good stuff to say about him. Good, good, good. All right, so I, I kind of want to get into the beginning of your story or your life story and stuff like that. So first, uh, you, you were born in Santiago, right, in DR? I was born in Hanico, Santiago. Yeah, it's part of Santiago, yeah. Oh, okay, there's a campo por allá por Hanico. I know where that is. Un campo de Santiago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, uh, that's by like San Jose de la uh, Matas. Yeah, I was born in Hanik, and then I was pretty much raised in San Jose de la Mata. And, ah, then, and then we moved to Santiago, and then I came to the States when I'm like, I was like nine years old. All right. Uh, how, how was that transition from DR, San Jose de la Mata, kind of like Campo Live to Santiago, and then to, you know, America? And where in America did you go uh, first? I've been in Danbury since, man. I've been since 1989 in Danbury. I came to Danbury and then, and I stayed here. I mean, I moved around because of boxing. You know, there was um when I before I turned pro, like I was, um, I was training at Holyfield camp in uh, Houston for like for like a year, and then after you know I got signed by by his by his trainer, then I moved to uh, North Carolina for I was in camp for like two years. That's when I first turned pro back in '99. But yo, it was it was a completely different world, bro. Coming from Dominican, 
coming from one of those campos of Dominican to the uh, United States. It was a different universe, I would say, but it was in a different world. I mean, I came, I came from like a like like the farm countryside where there was no electricity, there was no radio. We had like a very small little radio. There was no TV, you know. And it's crazy. And I talk to my kids nowadays about that, and they laugh. They're like, yo, Papa, you lying to me. I'm telling you. <laughs> so, but, you know, I took them back to the camp, but to the same house where I was, where I was at with my grandmother. And, they, you know, they're amazed. You, you grew up using a latrina? Latrina, loco, toda esa vaina. No, no, no toilet, but latrina. Wiping myself with, with the corn tusas. Oh, that, the <laughs> I know. I, listen, man, I'm Dominican too, so I know exactly what you're talking about. Uh, all right. So, so, w- w- uh, and at what age did you start boxing? You said you came to America. So you came to boxing. Danbury, Connecticut. Oh. Yeah, I started boxing like around, like, I would say about six months after that. Yeah, I was like, yeah, I was almost 10 years old when I started boxing. What drew you to boxing? Oh, man. It's, it's like I told you, I'm back, coming from the Dominican Republic. I barely speak uh, Espanol Machucao back in those days. I barely speak Spanish, you know. So coming here, I didn't speak English at all. And I remember I met my first Dominican friend in school because back in those days here in Danbury, there was not too many Latinos around then. You know, you weren't you weren't even allowed to speak in, uh, Spanish in school back in those days. Wow. So I met my first, uh, my first Dominican friend, <clears throat> which, you know, right now, Hopefully he's in heaven. He, um, he went down the wrong route after that. But yeah, I met him and uh, I remember I went, I went to, um, I went looking for him at his house after school. I said, yo, I'm gonna, let's meet up. We're gonna play basketball. He had like a, like, he had like a basketball hoop like right across the street from his house. So when I went there, when I went there, his mom was very strict. So she said, no, he's in the gym right now. The gym was like right around the corner. I said, what gym? What, what? I didn't know, I didn't even know what a gym was to be honest. You know, and then um, I didn't wait for him. I said, I'm going to go look for him because we were supposed to be playing basketball. And stuff. So when I went to the gym, it was a boxing gym, bro. And it's like, as soon as I walked in, bro, I was so impressed by it. To me, it was like it was like a kid going to a playground, you know, and it's like I saw so many kids in the gym. And it was like it was like a new, a whole different new world for me because I didn't know anybody. He was the only friend that I had. So. There was a lot of Latino at the boxing gym, and I felt like, yo, this is this is this is where I need to be at. But it wasn't even that, to be honest. What started everything was the competition. Like that same friend that I'm talk- telling you about, his name was Yerli, Yerli Pies from uh, from uh, what's that? What's the the place in Dominican? Um, I forgot. I'm gonna say Yama yeah, lugar. But anyways. Uh, I forgot the name of the, of the city where that he was from. But when I went there, bro, he was like a skinny little kid, like a skinny kid, you know, he was tall but very skinny. And I'm saying, yo, and, and then I saw everybody like, it was like, a, it was like a, like a hustle in there. Like everybody's, like, everybody's like, yo, I can beat you. You can't beat me. It was like that, you know, just kid stuff. And then, and then I told him, bro, if I can't beat you, my man, like as skinny as you are, you just, come on, man, I got, I can beat you. No, no problem. <laughs> and, just, and, and the coach is just laughing at me because he was already, he was already advanced, you know. He was really doing it for for years. Mm-hmm. Boy, I went in that ring with that with that skinny kid, man. He he played around with me, man. He played around, man. He made me feel he he made me feel like a fool. So I couldn't believe it. To be honest, I couldn't believe it. And once I seen that, like I felt all, like all bruised and stuff. I felt like terrible, terrible. I just couldn't believe. It. I said, bro, this can't be this this can't be this can't be real. And that's what really got me into it, like the competition. Like, yo, how, how the hell did I get beat up by a, by a skinny kid like that? And, man, after that, bro, I just started training. Man. I just started training, like, every day. I was at the gym every day, every day, every day, every day. Because I just couldn't believe that. And I just also, that also got me, like, into the group that, or that, that group of Latino kids that I could, I could talk to because they mm-hmm. spoke Spanish. <laughs> so it was, it was pretty much a way out, man. It was just a feel... It was a, it was it was me looking for like a comfort zone, you know, coming to a whole different universe, whole different country, not speaking the language, not knowing the culture, and um, it was tough, man. It was rough because my mom, and my 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 father, you know, they they're not 
they're from the campo, you know what I'm saying? They're not very well educated uh, parents that, you know, can help out a lot. And, and it was hard, bro. It was hard. It was like, because back when I lived in Dominican, life was nice over the nice, even though we didn't have electricity, we didn't, we didn't need it. We didn't know any well, any better. Mm -hmm. So it was good, man. When I got here, it was rough. You know, at that age, nine years old, you know, kids could be very, they could be, very, kids can be uh, very mean at that age. So it basically, it was just a way out, man. And then I got into it. I got really good at it. I started traveling around the country, you know, doing different tournaments, national, regionals, golden gloves, silver gloves, all that. I won like, I believe like six junior Olympics. Wow. Oh, man, it was, it was me in paradise. You know, I, I was traveling around the, 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 the country and um, I got good at it. So I got respect from all the kids in the gym. And it, 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 that's how it started out. You know, it started out as competition. Did, did you fight anybody of note uh, in the amateurs? Anybody like we would know? Like, you know. Of course. Man. I, I beat um, Manili, uh, Peter. Peter, um, he's from Connecticut. He, 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 won, he was in that show, um, that contender show. Well, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I know his name. The guy with, like, the bad nose. Yeah, I yeah. I, I beat him. Peter Manfredi. Manfredi. Yeah. I beat him. I beat um. I fought um. Uh, what's that? I got the the champion that he's a. Uh, uh, damn. He's from Connecticut, but he, he was a champion for a while. Um, I can't think of his, his name right now. Not Chad, yeah, Dawson. Chad Dawson. Yep, Chad. You fought Chad okay. Dawson. Um, yeah, there was there was a lot of guys, man. That, that back in those days. That uh, it, it was great because there was a lot of competition. But it's not like it's not like, like nowadays. You don't really see those competition. I mean, yeah, there is some good prospect coming up, but back in those days, but when you fall in the gloves, you have to fight ten, fifteen times sometimes. You know what I'm saying? Like every week. When I went to the national, bro, I fought six times every day, every day, man, for six times the whole week. And you come back tired and sore and everything. Yeah, man. I mean, you gotta have a strong mind. And I was just talking to some of my, some of my friends today. It's like, yo, once you step to that level, my man. Once you step to that level, the A level where I went, that your your mind it plays like a very strong role in how how the fight is gonna is gonna turn out because you're gonna get hit. I don't care. You can. I don't care who you're fighting at that level. You're gonna get hit. You know what I'm saying? So you better you 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 better. You better have a strong mind because one mistake it could cost you the fight. For sure. Uh, wh what did your parents say when you started joining boxing, coming home with a fat lip and a blood and a black eye? You know, your family from the campo they never seen that. You know, they want you to probably play baseball or something. But what yeah. did they say when, they, when you wanted to start boxing? You know, my mom. You know, how moms are man. They they worry a lot, but. She was very happy because I was doing something. You know what I'm saying? I was doing some, some kind of a, a productive activity. And then my coach, he was like, forget it. He was everything, man. He was um, like a, a, a old Puerto Rican guy. And he was like the best, bro. He took me he took me all over. Like, my mom couldn't do it. You know, my mom had to work. My father was working until like midnight. So they're, they're like, I'll get it. I, go to, I get from school and they're already at work. So my mom was pretty happy because she got to know the the Mike, his name was Mike, my Puerto Rican coach, my first coach, and he was just he was just an amazing person, you know, the stuff that he did for the kids at that time. Uh, my mom was very happy, and she trusted him so much because this is a guy that you meet one time and you know that he's just he's all about helping the kids out. You know, I started out with the PAL at that time. There was a PAL gym, gym here in Danbury, you know, and um. I got my first bike from the PAL gym. You know, I got you. You, you just didn't, you didn't just go in the gym and train to just do boxing. They were, they were like show you respect, and you had to have good grades. You know what I'm saying? All that. So it was like a great program at that time. And my mom was my mom was very happy. You know, yeah, she could have never go to. She never went to none of my fights. She went to my first fight, my first amateur fight. I remember. After that, I said, "No, nah, you can't go to my fights." Yo, she'll pass out, bro. She'll pass out. What about what about when you went pro? Did she go in the end of your fight? Nah, you she, never, she never saw my fight. 
she used to watch it on TV, bro. And like the people that be that like, that be watching over her, they were like, "Yo, your mom, all she did was like back, like in and out of the room, just praying in and out of the room. She didn't really see like a whole, like a whole entire, like a whole entire um, round." Right. What What about your father? How How would he go to your amateur fights, pro fights, and stuff like nah, that? Nah, my father got deported. Like he got deported. Like he wasn't here when I turned pro. Oh. No? Like he got deported when I was like thirteen. That was another thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, what, 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 why did he get deported? What happened? I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of stories. They give me a lot of. He never told me. The, I know he never told me the truth. You know what I'm saying why the, the real reason why. But for you, the only thing that he told me why he got caught with a gun that was illegal. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's a whole bunch of stories from that I hear from the family. So I don't really know. Really know what happened. Okay. All right. Uh, why why Danbury, Connecticut? Why 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 Danbury? Like you know, usually Dominicans, we we come to New York, maybe Boston, New Jersey, but Connecticut. I'll tell you why? Because my mom, my father, they hate the city. Mm -hmm. My mom to this day, she she's American, she's American uh, citizen, but she lives more, most in the in uh, DR. And yo, she go to my house. I have a house in Santiago. That's why that's where I live at now. She probably go there for a day or two, bro, and she like. She get, she goes out, but she she gotta get out. She, yeah, loves combo. Combo. she loves the combo, bro. I mean, and I understand her age, bro. The combo is like, I go to the combo and it's like it's it's, pe it's peaceful. Mm -hmm. You relax, you know. You 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 don't have to worry about nobody trying to mug you or nothing like that. Yeah. No, no, for sure, a lot less noise, and you got the animals there. And, and, I know. and the weather and the weather's perfect, bro. It's, it's beautiful out there. Nah, for sure, for sure. I love it out there. I love it out there. But I, I, I want to get into your professional career. <laughs> you have a you have a loss early in your career. It's a split decision versus a guy named Andre Eason. Uh, what happened there? Because uh, I, I never saw the fight, unfortunately. But uh, well, I, what happened you, I, I guess I can talk about this now because now I'm, I'm retired, so. You know, when you're not, when you still fight an active fighter and you talk this way, they're gonna look at you like, oh, this guy's just fucking making excuses because he lost his fight. But I never did that. If you go back in, into my record, bro, there was like, I will say f about five fights that there, I was just playing ro robbery, bro, playing. You know, that kid that you're talking about, I remember that fight. It was that was in Atlanta City. Um, I beat the I beat the kid. You know what I'm saying? I beat the kid. Yeah, he was good at. I mean, he was he, he was a good boxer, strong kid, uh, and he made it to the top level as well. You probably don't remember him, but I'm trying to think of a guy that he fought. But um, I beat him, I beat him, uh, and um, he got a, uh, oh, I think it was a split decision, something like that. I'm not sure. I don't remember those days, but yeah, there was there was I had a lot of. Um, Bad decisions in my career, man. bad decision, bad situations, which is why it's like it comes to a point where you just feel like are you broken, like I'm broken, like what's the sense of doing this crap, you know? Um, and a lot of stuff like that happened during my career, a lot of bad experience. You you went on to win a, a, a bunch of fights after that, including winning the IBF USBA welterweight championship. Yeah, uh, and then you you uh, you lost to Jesse Feliciano uh, by knockout. Uh, what happened in that fight, and why and why why you guys never rematched? Ah oh, man, um, that was like the only real. F that that was like that was another thing that that was another thing that people don't understand. To be when you're a professional fighter, right? There is a circle of Manager, manager, trainer, promoter. That has that circle has to be really tight for shit to work, bro. Although I believe it's not gonna work. You can you can have all the time in the world, and they'll they'll, they'll fuck the fight up. At that time, bro, I couldn't make that weight class. I my 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 legs was locked. Like, and my my trainer then he didn't want to understand. I never listen to this. Listen to this. I never had a physical trainer. I now I never had a, a like a weight trainer. I, like I never had a, a guy that, that put that show me diets. I never had that in my career. Like I did that on my own, without none of the knowledge 
I did that with my own. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. when I fought that fight, bro, it wasn't he was like Feliciano didn't even hurt me, but like you know what I'm saying? Like I was I was beating the crap out of him. He didn't even hurt me. It's just that when he punched me, like a soft punch, bro, I just my my feet, my legs, they were locked, bro. I don't remember how many how many pounds I had to lose for that for that for that fight, and yeah, he was a strong kid, which it was it was bad because he was a he was a like a, a pressure fighter. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. He didn't punch hard, but he was a pressure a pressure fighter. So it made you work. Yeah, it made me work. I was drained, completely drained, bro. Mm-hmm. And, and and the kid was even like he wasn't even touching me. He wasn't even hitting me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it just happened, bro. It's like I, I couldn't respond. I couldn't. When 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 he hit me with a soft punch, my legs just lagged, but I couldn't I couldn't even get up, you know what I'm saying? Like and um I went through that many fight after that. It was one fight where I was like, yo, I can't fight this weight class, but man. I'm six feet tall. I can't I can't make 140. You know what I'm saying? I can't. Can't do this. Yeah. And and then we then I got into a fight with my coach and I got a fight into one of my promoter and my manager. There was so many things, bro, that we could go hours and hours talking about. So many things that happened that broke me down that I was like, yo, there's no sense of doing this no more, you know? Like, my last fight, my last fight I went into, it was like, I, I'm just going to do it because, let's say, I still got a contract with my manager. I'm just going to do it. But I wasn't really, you know, I wasn't in, into boxing anymore. You know what I'm saying? I love the sport of boxing, but the business is the worst. No, that that I totally agree with. I totally agree with. But one thing I did like about the times back then is that when when, when you would uh, take a loss, you would be, be back on <clears throat> excuse me, be back on ESPN your next fight. It wasn't like now, like where you take a loss, all of a sudden you a bum, you suck. I never want to see this well, guy because it's business. And if it, at the end of the day, it's a business, my man. Like, it's a business. They're not going to put a fighter on ESPN that it's not exciting, that people don't want to see. You know what I'm saying? Sure. People always want to see me because I was I, I always, I was aggressive. I was mm-hmm. excited. You know what I'm saying? I always brought something new to the drink. So ESPN always was always always had a, a yes for us. You know what I'm saying? Every time we, we asked for a fight. But that's how it is. It's just the business. You know, it's like uh, I brought – my promoter to uh, Showtime and, and HBO. I brought him. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I was, I was the one that brought them. So it's always like backwards. Like I never had that that team, that, that solid team, that a, a professional that step into the A level needs to be able to accomplish a world title. No, no, and and and, and honestly. Like it was very much appreciated from us fans for, from the perspective of uh, uh, entertainment value, and you you were good. Apart that, people want to make it seem like you was just some dumb brawler who came and entertained the fans. But you, me and you both know it was much more to that. And in your next fight against, uh, which I want to get to how you punch, but in your next fight, you cut. Keenan Allen's with a punch. They call it a headbutt. And then uh uh you, you guys like challenged it and you ended up getting switched to a to a knockout. Yeah, and it was clear, it was clear overhand right, bro. I mean, he clear clear. A jab. I always, I always had a counter punch with the right hand. You know, mm-hmm. I mean it was clear that it was it was not a headbutt. Yeah. No, and, and I remember watching that fight live. I remember clearly like watching it on TV. And I wanted to ask you. You had a uh uh like just a knack for cutting people with your fist. Like, what is it about the way you would punch, the way you would torque your punches that would make people cut? You would cut people almost every fight, uh, and a lot yeah. of your, your 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 stoppages were by cut. What is yeah. it about your punches that would cause that? Well, let me tell you something that that, that wasn't something that it just happened automatically. That's something that we, that we practice. Like I gotta give that to my my main coach Lou Fusco. You know, he was always my main coach. We always that's a technique where you turn the punches at the end. You gotta turn your fist at the end of the punch. It's a snap. You know what I'm saying? You gotta snap it. You throw your snap at the end. You know what I'm saying? It was a technique that we practiced over and over and over, and 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 it just became natural to every time I fought. You know, the punch just came out quick and with that snap. 
and that's how you, you you stamp at the end and you cut the skin. Uh, let, let, let's also talk about this is a bit of a sad story. Uh, you for I believe his name was Oscar Diaz. Yes. Yeah, and again, like any typical Delvin Rodriguez fight, it was entertaining. You know, you, you guys are going back and forth. It's clear you you're you're taking you're getting the better of it. And it gets to one point where he gets to the corner and he doesn't look right. And he ends up uh, getting sent to the hospital. And uh, I don't believe he made it, right? I don't believe he made it. Yeah, he, he was in the coma for like three months and then he passed. Yeah. So talk to me your feelings in the ring once you see once you see it's more of a ser serious situation and then the feeling... Oh, he's in a coma, and then the feeling like, oh my God, he's gone. Talk to me about that feeling as a fighter, because I I know you guys are just there to feed your family, but these are the things that happen in boxing. You know, there, there's something about that fight that I, ne I never really talked to anybody about it. But I mean, that he was a undefeated kid, kid. He was coming up, like you know, he was doing good. He had the USBA, I believe, and um, he was a pressure fighter. You know what I'm saying? But so like after the third round, I see that. He's backing off. He's backing off. So I'm like, oh, I got this. Because his only way to fight was just come forward. And, yeah, he throws some crispy punches, but he had combination. And he, he was a pressure fighter. So after the third or fourth round, he started, you know, backing off. And I'm I'm like, I'm, I'm pushing. I'm pushing. And I'm hitting him with, like, hard right hand. Like, I'm talking about hard. You know what I'm saying? And I know that. I say, that's it. I got to fight. This kid's not going to go any long like this. Just taking punches. And then after the, I think it was, yeah, it was the tenth round. Tenth round was what you know, he got he got he got an eight count, and then when he went back to the corner, he kind of just felt they collapsed in the corner, you know, and um, he just collapsed after that. They took him away. I'm like, okay. At that moment, I I felt like I won the fight. Uh, I won the fight. I'm happy. You know, say that was my first title. Um. And at that time, you don't you don't expect something so so major like that to happen. You know, like, okay, he, he got hurt. It's just you know just being the, it's just like a protocol. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. The they got to take him away. They got to examine. Him. That's all. That's the only thing that's going through my mind. You know what I'm saying at that moment. But then you know, the next day, you know they tell you the, the guy is he's in a coma. You know what I'm saying? And then a week goes by. You know, ten days go by. A, a month go by, and it's just like a, bit, a, a bitter sweet because check this out because of that because of that i got the job for espn and i worked for espn for like 10 years you know what i'm saying as a, as a uh, friday night fight i i, I was going to get to that i was going to get to that but you beat yeah, me to yeah. i'm telling you because because of that somebody got fucked you know what i'm saying and i got and i got that you know that is unfortunate but that's how it happened because why why they give you the job because of that? I, I I'm a bit confused. Well, I'm not gonna say exactly because of that, but I'm explaining to you what happened. When 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 uh, Oscar got into the coma, right, and everybody saw the fight. ESPN called me into into Bristol into the ESPN uh, campus for an interview. So you know, I go there and they treat me very nice. Um, I, I I start talking to the boss over there, and then you know. Um, I just started talking to the boss, and I'm like, oh, I like this. This is nice here. He's like, yo, he, the boss is like, well, I see you very comfortable with the camera. I'm like, yeah, this is nice. I like this. He said, and, and then I'm like, and then he's like, you know, that you know that we don't have a boxing analyst right now, and I think you'll be perfect for the job. I think you, who knows the sport more than you, you know, and uh, you're, you're very comfortable with the camera. You can speak Spanish and English. And I said, yo, I'm the man. Like, what's up? Well, when, can, when can we start? You know, he said, listen, I'm going to call you next week. You know, we're going to start you as a temp. Like, a, you know, like, a, what do I call it? Yeah, like a temp. Like, whenever we have show, I'm going to start, whenever we have shows into the studio, because they, they used to take turns. They do the show sometimes from the studios, or you mm -hmm. go live. You go to, you know, to your other stage. Yeah. So they started doing that. And, man, they helped me out so much, bro. Like, they, 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 they would give me, like, Cause yeah, I spoke Spanish, but not proper TV Spanish at that time. You know what I mean? I yeah, mean, yeah, I yeah. remember from the campo. So at that <laughs> time, bro, yo hablaba un español matado, tú sabes. 
So they were, they, 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 all that, they would give me like Spanish class classes every week. Wow. I mean, it, it, was, it was like the best thing that ever happened to me, to be honest. Like the, best, the best experience ever. And, and, and how was the pay? The pay was great, my man. The pay was great. I mean, even 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 when I was a tenant, you know what I'm saying? Then they, and then they started me as a salary, like a weekly salary. So it was it was it was great, man. You get to pay good money to have fun and do what you love and travel. Can, can you say now that you don't work there anymore? Can you say how much how much a year they were paying you? I started out was ninety three a year, and then it went up to a hundred, like one ninety three. One ninety three? Yeah. Oh, why are you still not there, bro? <laughs> a lot of stuff happened. They, don't, they took the show to Mexico. Ah, that is true. That is they true. Took the, yeah. they, show, they took the show to Mexico. I'm like, yo, there's no way I'm going to Mexico. I can't go. I'm not going to Mexico. But man, 193, and that's not counting the money you was making while you were fighting, too. Yeah, yeah so you were making really good that, money. Bro, they were paid for everything. But like, we, went, we went to a trip. Like We went to Vegas a lot. Like they will pay for everything, bro. Your cab, your food, your hotel, everything. It was it was great, man. And and, and not just that, the people that were the team, bro. Like they were they were so they was they were the best people, bro. They treated me so good. Like everybody, we, we it was like a, the like a, the best team ever. Like everybody got along great. Everybody had helped out each other. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't know if you know Claudia from. Yeah, she's working with the zone yeah, now. Yeah. Claudia, one of my main girls. She's one of the best. You know, um, uh, what was the other? Uh, there was because a lot of a lot of people went to Vegas. Some of them worked in Miami, but some sometimes they visit us, uh, uh, Bristol, and then when we went to the to the stage live. Everybody, everybody met up, so it was great, man. Man, that 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 that's so dope. I'm so dope, and and, and I'm glad you was making your money back then. I'm glad because a lot of times I felt like uh, you would get the short end of the stick at fights. So at least you was you know getting. The it good side happened. of boxing. It always happened, like you, like you said, that I always get in the short end of the stick. And, and the reason was because of the team. And not blaming my, my promoter, but the man, not my, oh, I'm sorry, not blaming my um, my man, my trainer. But you know, it, it had to do with the promoter. It had to do with the negotiation the promoter does for each fight. And it, it starts at the manager. The manager got to, the manager got to look out for me and talk to the promoter. And the promoter, it's the one that makes the you know that the makes the fights. So like I can say it's a whole team, bro. And that team has to be a solid team for you for your career to really take off. Uh you, you fought uh Isaac Haswayo twice. That was another robbery, bro. That was another robbery. I mean Do you think I, I wanted to ask you, do you think you got robbed both times? Both times, I mean, both times. I mean, the first time, the first time they caught it a draw, right? And then no, yeah. first time they caught it a loss. Check this out. The 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 in the ring, they raise his, his hand. They say he won, right? And then one of the judges came back and say, "Hey, I didn't give him. I didn't give him the fight. Why are you? You know what I'm saying? Like it, it was just it was so obvious, bro. That that every time I got robbed, and the judge, we we actually made a meeting. You know what I'm saying? Like the the next day after the fight, because the judge came, he came clean. He said, "Yo, I didn't give him the fight." How are you guys? How do you guys have him winning? You know, so then it came back and then and then they, they reversed it to a draw. So I said, wow. yo, I'll take a draw better than a loss. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. In the same way, like my hometown, bro. I'm fighting in my hometown, Mohegan Casino, my man. Yeah. They call him, he won. Like, if you see that fight, like <laughs> It's just they robbed me out of my world, my 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 world title. Uh, why wh wh why do you think that happened in your hometown? You know what I'm saying? The Especially team, the, the promoter. The promoter had no power. The promoter had no saying. It's all about that. Believe it or not, people don't know that in boxing. You know, the, the promoter has a lot of saying. If the promoter doesn't have people, if the promoter doesn't have the connection, the, the night is not going to go your way. Hmm. What do you think that? Why? What do you think that that? Mayweather always fought in Las Vegas. Most of his career. I, I, you, you saying that the promote his 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 team? I won't say promoter. His team 
had good yeah, relationships. Up. Yeah, they got good relationships, bro. And like, even though I never saw Floyd losing any fight, because people have a lot of saying about that. But I went through, I went through all his fight as a boxer and also as an analyst. He didn't, he never lost any fight. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, there was, there was one close fight when he fought Castillo. It was very close. You know what I'm saying? But people, people looked at a lot of punches. That the problem with Floyd was people always uh, counted the punches that were hitting his arm and that he blocked. Hey, it didn't hit you. You can't count that as a point. You know what I'm saying? He hit, he blacked out of punches with his gloves and all that. But anyway, that's another topic. But yeah, that, I mean, the team, bro, the promoter, the manager, the promoter has a lot to do with any decision that is made in your career, in any boxing career, any boxing career. People don't know that. You got to have the right promoter. You got to have the right manager. They got to have the right connection. All that. That, that means a lot. I I, I, I I couldn't wait to get to this part this part of the interview, man. Your fight with Pavel Wolak, the first one, that is I did it win fight of the year? I don't even know. Yeah, it was fight of the year, 2016. That fight right there, I could watch that fight 30 times in a row, and I will not be bored. Neither time. I, I will yeah. be gladly watch that fight 30 Let times. Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. You saw that fight, right? The first yes, fight. I did. did you have that a draw? No, I thought you won. I thought you won okay. seven to three. That's what I'm saying. That's the same I think. So that was the, that, that was always my problem in my career, bro. It gets to a point where it's like you do it, you do it. And you're like, yo, what? I don't have nobody backing me up. What the fuck? What am I doing this for? You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And to me, to you, it might it, it might not make any sense, but when you're training for a, far, a fight so hard for like three months. It's a very, it's the most intense sport, and you're killing yourself, bro. It's like you work so hard. It's like you, it's like let's say you have a a, a a nine to five job, right? And you go kill yourself the whole week, bro. At the end of the week, the boss say, "No, I, I ain't paying you. You're not gonna, you're not gonna get paid. Fuck that. You're not gonna get paid. I don't care. You can cry, you can jump, but you're not gonna get paid. You, you think you're gonna, you wanna go back next week and work?" You know, you're not gonna want to go back to the next week of work. You know what I'm saying? It feels like the same way. It's like you train so hard, so intense. You go away. You you stay away from your family. You know what I'm saying? You, you focus, and then you know that you beat this guy because you're so much better than this guy, but you don't get the decision. You know what I'm saying? And once you and, 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 and that happens over and over and over, you're like, you know what? Fuck it. I don't care how strong your mind is, bro. So you're like, fuck it. I, I, honestly, it, it, it didn't. It didn't seem that way with you. You you kept coming back and you kept fighting. I, I don't know what you was going through. You keep trying, bro. You keep trying, my man. You keep trying, yeah. but then it gets to a point where you lose focus. You lose focus, and and you don't even like. I lost. I lost focus where I wasn't even on top of my promoter, like checking every move that he made. And one of my man, like one of my best managers, was Stan Hoffman. And and he made like, he made like the, one of the biggest mistakes. He got me tied down with my, my promoter forever. Like you know what I'm saying? Like I will either sit down for two years, and at that time I was at, at an age that I couldn't afford to sit down for two years. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, I just had to follow through. Yeah, you, know, you you when you wanna, when you got a, when you have a, a a contract when you sign a contract you got to follow through. For sure, for sure. Uh. uh. Get, get, getting back to, to to the fights you had, you rematched Pavel Wolak immediately. And I was actually there live. I was at Madison Square Garden when you fought Pavel Wolak for the rematch. This was you on the other fight, You see that, that fight when I when I rematched him? I could have mm. knocked him out. I, I would have knocked him out. Like it would have had been like the the, the double like a year, like a year before that, two years. I it was an easy fight for me. I beat him easy. I I didn't press. Oh, I didn't I didn't have that. I didn't have that. Fights like I'm let me knock him out, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but right there, you could you could tell already that I was like, yo, I wasn't really into it as much. Nah, but you beat him up bad. I was there live again, I was there, and you had the garden rocking. Uh, and honestly, I, I, I want to say it was either the ninth or the tenth round, you almost did knock him out. Uh, yeah, but I what was that feeling like, like Madison Square Garden? What's up? I should have pressed more, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, what was that feeling like though? Being in Madison Square Garden and you had the crowd going crazy, and this is a fight you was dominating. What was that feeling like? 
No, I mean that that is honestly that that's that's a really motivation. It's like it's like when it's like a a, a nowadays, you know what I'm saying? The most the more the most the most noise you hear, the better you feel, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that that's what brings brings uh, the motivation. But it was it was a great experience. Um I got the fight, you know, I mean the, the draw got me a better fight. And step by step, that that's how boxing is. But uh, it was good. I mean, it was great. I wasn't surprised because I knew that I beat him the first time, and I knew that the second time it was just gonna be so much easier for me. Okay. Uh so this this fight is a random fight, but I'm gonna bring it up anyways, only because I know him personally, and he feels he was cheated when he fought you. Uh, uh, Sean Cameron. Oh my uh, god, that guy's sick, man. That guy he, he he can't get that shit off his head. But man, I toy with him, bro. I was just yeah, I even had my hand down. He's just not he was never my level, my man. He was just not like I'm not I'm not being I'm not trying to be arrogant, but I know boxing. He's just not he's not he's not he's he wasn't on my level, you know what I'm saying? Like he was slow, very slow. I was playing around with him, like I, I even knocked him down one time, you know, like that fight. It was just a fun fight for me because I wasn't even trying. Like I wasn't even trying. I wasn't even trying to knock him out. He, he claims that that you wore eight ounce gloves and he had to wear ten ounce gloves or something bull crap. like that. That's a bull crap. Where he get that from? Where the hell was that gonna happen, bro? Where? I, I, I'm just going by what he told me. Yo, he just yo. He, I I know because after, after the fight, he really hit me up on Facebook. I'm like, this guy, this guy, this guy's out of his mind, bro. Like. And, and, and he really thought he won the fight. Like, and now he's saying, like, what commissioner is gonna accept that? Like, you're gonna wear eight, but I'm gonna wear ten. Or you I'm gonna wear or you yeah, you're, you're gonna wear six, I'm gonna wear eight. Come on, bro. Now I I I you know, it's just the only reason I brought it up is because no, no, I'm, I'm telling you by that, and I know him personally, so I'm no, like, and I believe and I believe and I believe you when you tell me that because he was talking a lot of crap in Facebook after he got beat up. Yeah. Well, well, like like when you look at back in your career as a totality, you know, we know you fought Cotto, you fought Lara. Unfortunately, those didn't go your way. But I want to say you had a good career, man. Uh, like when you look back in your career, what do you make of it? Do you feel like uh, you got the most out of your career or, or do you feel a bit cheated because there was a lot of decisions that, that didn't go your way? No, I, don't, I, wouldn't even, I wouldn't even talk about the decision. You know what I'm saying? Like, if anybody have a little bit of knowledge of boxing, you could you could watch those fights. You know that I've been cheated at least minimum four fights, four. Uh, but I don't even think about that. What I what, what gets to me is you know the way that I was treated. You know, what I'm saying the way I didn't have a professional team. Like I never really had a professional team where, bro. Okay, let's talk about quarter fight. Let's talk about the quarter fight. That like that's the only fight that people really look at. Like one of the biggest, which is not the biggest. It's the biggest fight for people, for the fans, all right? Let's look at that fight. When I was training for Cordova, man, I was training with amateurs, sparring with amateurs. I don't have no nutritionist, no no, no weight, no weight trainer. And go and look at Coro's training camp. He trains like a professional that's at that level supposed to train. You have your nutritionist, you have your cook, you have your weight trainer, you have all that, man. When you step into that level, come on, you gotta have that. This is this is not baseball where you can be like, yo, hey coach, I'm tired. Let me go sit. Can I sit down? Put somebody else in. This is not it's not baseball, it's not basketball. You know what I'm saying? It's one on one in that ring. You gotta be at your hundred percent. You gotta be everything had to click. That whole circle had to click for you to do the best. And even at the fight, it's at the fight. The referee, you could tell right there when you have how you know when you got the favorite. Fighting his hometown, uh, my hometown where, where I'm talking about, like Orlando, it's a yeah, Puerto Rican. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, okay, yeah, he hit me. He called me with a good cook, but I wasn't hurt. I, I couldn't get up. The, you know, the referee jumped on top of me. If you see the fight, I'm like, yo, what the hell? Can I get up? Like, you're jumping and just, he hugged me and jumped on top of me. I'm like, yo, it's like, yo, it's like everything is just, but again, it comes down to the team. The promoter doesn't have the, the promoter doesn't have the connection, he doesn't have the respect. That, that wouldn't happen to Al Heyman. <laughs> that would never happen to Al Heyman. That would never happen to uh, Pat Brand. That would never happen. You know what I'm saying? Because they, 
they in the they in the in the winning corner. That's what they call it, the winning corner. They respect the the corner that's respect because. Hold on. I can't hold on, hold on. I, I can't hear you. Uh for whatever reason the the audio went out. Uh not okay. How, jump out and jump back in. Jump out and jump back in. Yeah. All right. All right, guys. Sorry, you know, we have a little technical difficulties. Yeah, y'all know how uh No, no, no. Exit out, ex exit out, and then hit the same link I sent you. Exit out. Yeah. yeah. So as you guys know, we're doing live, live, you know, television. These things kind of happen. So bear with me. Uh, he'll be back. Uh, I've definitely been enjoying the interview a lot. Uh, this uh, again, this is somebody who I, I've watched. I watched at least 15, 20 fights of his growing up. Like I, I, I remember. That's why a lot of these questions I'm asking, it's all about, you know, fights that I saw in the moment. You know what I'm saying? And uh, fights that meant a lot to me back then. I remember when hearing he had a fight come up and getting excited. I remember those days back in, you know, 2009, 10. You know, I remember those days. And I remember watching that Pavel Wolak fight versus uh, uh, uh uh, both of them. I was there live for the second one. I wish I was there live for the first one, which it was in New York. But back then, Broadway Joel wasn't making what Broadway Joel was making. Now, you know, a $100 ticket back then was a lot for me. <laughs> that was a lot for me. So, uh, um, you know, it's, it's, uh, uh, it's, uh, I wasn't there, but I was there for live for the second fight, which, you know, I finagled my way to muster up enough money to get not only Delvin Rodriguez versus Pavel Wolak, also the main event, Cotto versus Margarito. So uh, actually, that was a good night of boxing for me that day. But either way, that's neither here nor there. Let, let's see if uh, uh, he had trouble with the link before. Uh, you know, maybe he's still having trouble with the link. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate the kind words. It's a great interview so far, Chris Mart. That that was my man, Nobody ninety two. Shout out to Nobody ninety two. Then my man, Chris Martina says fire interview so far. I appreciate that. Uh, yeah, but uh, uh now a hundred dollar ticket. That was uh, I was saying for the first fight. The first fight was in the Roseland Ballroom. Hundred dollar ticket. You could have got a really good seat at at uh, at uh. uh for, for the Roseland Ballroom. Uh, uh but uh for the for his the second fight, which was on the, I believe it was the co-main event. I could be wrong. Co-main event for Cotto uh Margarito 2. I I had bought a ticket. I don't re remember how much my ticket was then, but I remember going, shit, I'm getting Delvin and I'm getting Cotto. Whatever the money was at the time, I remember feeling it was worth it. I went with my brother and my best friend, and we we bugged out. We had fun. Uh, oh, yeah. He's back, my man. Uh, all right. Can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you now. My bad. I don't know. Something happened where I couldn't hear you before, but uh, yeah. Who, who was your promoter? Because you keep referencing, oh, my promoter. What what was his name? I don't want to throw the name out there. Like now nah, we, we got to throw the name out there so people know. People know who he is. I don't. I don't think it's 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 just his fault. I just think that he was coming up at that time. You know what I'm saying? All right. Wink twice if it's Jimmy Birchfield. Jimmy's <laughs> <laughs> man, bro. That's my man. I respect right, Jimmy. Right. Nah, nah, I right. Jimmy cool, 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 cool. Amateurs. What was it? you know him since the amateurs? Yeah. Yeah, he, he uh, he, he uh, I believe he's co promoter of Jermaine Ortiz who fought recently. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah. do you have anything to do with boxing now? Like, do, do you train? Do you promote? Do you manage? Do you support? Or what, what, what is it? You know, you have anything in boxing or are you totally done? Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start. I just start. I'm about to start. Um, uh, same, almost same thing as you're doing, you know, like, uh, 
But more as analysts, you know what I'm saying? Like more as an analyst channel and just analyze the fights and and all that. You know what I'm saying? Like I was gonna start a, a gym in Dominican Republic, but right now it's just too much time, bro. I, I, it's just too much time to do that. Because I wanna do it, I wanna do like a PAL, like like how I started out here, like a PAL program for the kids over there. But down the road, I've definitely got that in mind. But right now, I just want, I want, there's, I see so many channels out there, bro, and it's like, I don't, I don't think, I just think people, get, they get excited because they see a little, a little boxing on, on, on TV and stuff, and they, and they really think they know what they're talking about. And, you know, I don't take that away from nobody. But I think for you to be, really be a boxing analyst, you, you really got to, you, you got to be a fighter. You, you got to have been, you got, you got to be at that level where, where you know what it feels. Why why is this happening? Why? You know what I'm saying? Like, people don't know that. But you can't blame the fans. Of course not. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, you got to some sometimes be at that level to be able to understand why things happen to a fighter. Sometimes you see a fighter that is not doing good, that it's not his night. You don't know what's, what's going on. You don't, you don't know what's going on. How how was his training camp? You know what I'm saying? How was his part? How was his... um. Did he have any problem with the managers? Like, like it happened to me. So a lot, of, a lot of things go behind um, behind the scene that are more important than the fight that people don't know about. And <clears throat> there's a lot of reason um, things happen in the ring. And people, you, you as a fan, you, you, if you didn't fight, you would not be able to tell. Hey man, listen. When you start your podcast or your YouTube channel, whatever it is, you need anything from me, any kind of help. No, you have to. You know, and of course, I'm gonna bring you in a couple times. For sure, for sure, man. I I I look forward to it. No, no, not not only me being on the show, which for sure you got a hundred percent. Thank you, appreciate except, it. But I'm talking about like if you need oh certain lighting, cameras, microphones, apps, whatever yeah. you know, and you don't know where to start, you got yeah. my number. You could just call me. Hey, man, I'm trying to get started. Appreciate that, bro. Appreciate you it. Know. You got my number free of charge, nothing, you know, just, just, just for keeping me entertained all those Friday night fights, you already paid me. You already paid. I owe you. I owe you. Thank you, bro. Thank you. I appreciate that. Definitely keep you in mind. Yeah, no, because yo, your fights were like pay-per-view to me. I know that sounds crazy to you, maybe hearing that. I don't know. But when Delvin Rodriguez fought back in 09, 2010, 2011, for me, Broadway draw, that was pay-per-view. That was like, hey, baby. I, I'm busy right now. I'm bit after the fight. That was one of those nights, man. Yeah, you know that, that's a different now. You know, boxing is is a different era. I'm not saying there's a lot of. I see a lot of young talents coming up, right? But it's mm -hmm. just not the same. It's like I don't know what it is. I just think the competition is just not there. It's very little, very little competition. You know, because what makes a good fight? Two two good fighters. It's what make a good fight. You know what I'm saying? So I don't think the competition. There's not that many competition right there for good fighters to face each other. But back in those days, man, there's forget about it. For sure. <laughs> well, uh, uh, of the young Dominicans coming up or even the ones that are established, which Dominicans you look and you're like, oh, I like this guy uh, coming up. To be honest, bro, the names, I don't know. I, I did, I did go to, I did the Pan Am games. We went, went to Toronto. I went there for, we went there for 16 days. We just been to do, and it amazed me, bro. The Dominican team, they were, they, though they, they beat like three Cubans that time. And it's like, mm -hmm. that's when I noticed that Dominican boxing is, is growing a lot. It has grown a lot. You know what I'm saying? Um, but really, guys out, out, out there that I, that I like, I, that surprised me that with the style, that are very um, organized style. Because Dominican, they're known for style where, they wire, you know what I'm saying? They try to knock you out with a wire hook punch. That's what like they know. Fortuna. Yeah, like that. That's what they're known for. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, but this guy, you know who surprised me? The middleweight. Was he still a junior middleweight? Um, El Caballo? Carlos Adames. Carlos. He surprised me, man. He got down. At the beginning, I saw, yeah, this guy was throwing like wire punches. But now I see him, bro. He's like, he got a down pack. And I think he's going to go far, bro. I, I, I like him. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a lot of people, when I ask the, you know, what Dominican they like, they that's the name that comes up. Uh, I'm definitely a, a fan. I actually was on the phone with him yesterday. Uh, uh, we, we, uh, you know, 
we, we were we, we planning the interview uh maybe maybe on sunday nothing set yet but um yeah no he, he's definitely somebody who a lot of people like if you talk to him tell him that i'm very proud of him tell him you'll know, continue on uh, tell him I, I admire his style but he's doing great keep it up let him know i got you Yo, listen, I, I'm most likely going to interview him on Sunday. If you want, I'll send you a link again so you can tell him yourself. All right, that sounds good, man. That sounds All good. Right, man. Yo, but Delvin, man, uh, you're giving me an hour of your time. L listen, I've, I've enjoyed this so much. You have no idea. You made my day. You made my week, brother. I'm telling you. Uh, you're talking to a real fan. A part that I'm a journalist, I'm a fan too. And yeah. I was definitely a big Delvin Rodriguez fan. So thank yeah. you, bro. That's the reason why I accepted the interview because I seen I seen all the stuff. I seen you on, on Facebook one time, and I seen the people that, that you interview. You know what I'm saying? And I admire that, bro. You know, a guy that that wants to do it, that is coming up, and that's doing great. You know what I'm saying? I admire that. You know what I'm saying? And I'm, I'm trying to do the same thing. You know what I mean? And like I said, I'm here to help. I'm here. I, I, I'm your Swiss Army knife. Whatever you need, you call me, text me. Hey, man, I don't know what I'm doing. And I got you. Uh, you know, I got your number, definitely, man. Definitely. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, man. All right. And anything else you want to leave off uh, said to the fans, whether here in America or in Dominican Republic, uh, we, we we global on this channel. <laughs> I mean, the, what else am I going to say? You know what I'm saying? Uh, I don't know what really to, to say. Like, if I was still an active boxing, I, I probably had a lot to say, but... <laughs> Don't you got a club? Don't you own a club or a bar or something like no, that? No, I sold that. I sold that. Moved, I moved to Santiago. Right? So I'm, I'm, I live most of the time in Santiago. So I sell the club. Okay. And, so uh, what do you do in Santiago? You just retired and you live your life or you, yeah, you do business? Retired, just live in Santiago. I recently just opened up another like an office, like a multi-service office here. Just something to keep myself a little occupied. But uh, now nah, Dominican, I just spend a lot of time with my kids. And I got three young kids. Uh, right. my, oldest, my oldest just turned 22 today, as a matter of fact, but I got three young ones that lives with me in the uh, Dominican Republic. And that's it, man, just being a parent, being a father. All right. You, 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 do you have time for, for, for me to give the opportunity for the fans to call in and ask questions? Yeah, go ahead. Sure. All right. All right, everybody. I'm going to put the link in the chat. Anybody who wants to call in, ask Delvin Rodriguez a question directly. This is what I do. This is what the voice of Dominican boxing does. Bring the bring the fighters to you. I'm the bridge. So you guys could go ask him a question. And, and you know, he'll definitely be kind enough to answer. So it, it, if you, it, I'll give you guys five minutes if anybody wants to call in. Uh, so it's 9.03. I'll give it to 9.08. Anybody wants to call in, I, I, I'll, I'll give you guys the opportunity to ask him anything you guys want. But, uh, uh yeah, well, have you seen Elvis Rodriguez fight? Yeah, I didn't see his last fight. Now <clears throat> he was doing pretty good, um, but then he got caught a few times, right? He lost to uh, Kenneth Sims, and then uh, Top Rank released him. Yeah, and now he's with PBC. So what? Did, what did I tell you? It's, it's his business. And yeah. at the end of the day, if you're not if you're not shiny the way they want you to shine, that's it. They don't need you. That's that's how it is. If you could change anything about boxing, what would it be? I wouldn't make it into a... I would, I would say just like one president. One president, that's it, one. One president. And, and and it would be like a team, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you have your retirement plan, all that. You know what I'm saying? Like, that. But the thing is, like, every state has a commissioner. And every commissioner has their own saying. Like they got their own rules. They all, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And there's so many things that can prevent, that can make boxing so much better. You know what I'm saying? And and it's like now, they, let me tell you why that happens. To like different commissioners, like um, different session body, like different belts, which is all bull crap. So now it's like this. This is why boxing is almost. Like it's not as, as actually exciting, uh, exciting as it was when I was fighting because now it's like, like you, you, he got to fight me because I'm up next. But right now I see that they, they, they you know, say so they, they, they don't, they don't fight, they don't fight the champion. You know what I'm saying? So like they make their own rules. So there's it, a lot of, a lot of stuff there out there, a lot of politics in the sport, but. I think if they would have had like a, like a union, 
Like a union type mm -hmm. of thing for a bit different. You know what I'm saying? Nah, nah. And all these damn all these damn belts that they got that make their own rules and stuff. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. But it's still a sport, bro. It's still a great sport. I mean, I if anybody can do it, man, it's great. You gotta you gotta admire somebody that can do it and bring it to, and make it to that level. You have to admire. Sometimes, sometimes I look at I look at the media, right, and I get upset. But I'm like, yo, and then I think, no, why are you getting upset? You you you're dealing with fans. They don't know any better. You know what I'm saying? They they, they just like to talk. Because I get offended for other fighters. Like I see great fighters out there, right, and, and fans are talking all this crap. You know what I'm saying? It's like, damn, they don't appreciate. They don't know. They don't appreciate what their art of boxing really is. You know what I'm saying? I get upset, but I'm like, yo, don't even respond. Why are you gonna respond? They're not gonna understand. I, I got I got somebody I think you may know. I got my man Manny. Que lo que, mi hermano? De lo mío. Que lo que, manito. Tenía que venir a esta entrevista y saludar. Mira, eh, Joel, tú sabes que yo hay gente de, de, de grupito de aquí. Que ¿De dónde que son los bolsadores duros? De, ¿De dónde? ¿De San Francisco? ¿De, de qué lado? ¿De qué lado más? De la capital. Mira, el mejor de esa joma lo tenemos ahí, manito. La joma en la casa. Esa joma, esa joma pura de la placeta. La placeta City para el mundo. Joel, dale para la placeta, manito, para que tú veas lo que es un campo bonito, bro. Yo, 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 yo he ido a Río Bao, a Sánico. Yo he ido ah, por todos lados. Por todos lados he andado. Oye, Delvin, eh, yo estoy siguiendo a Joel, tú sabes, hace un ratico. Sí. Y cuando tú sabes, siempre yo me meto ahí porque tú sabes que yo soy loco con el bolseo. Yeah. Por eso que ese tipo, eh, yo, él me siento una vaina. Ese tipo es el mejor, hermanito. Ese, ese, ese tipo es el mejor porque es que yo, yo, yo tuve un poquito de, 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 de la cosita mala que a uno le gusta el traguito. Y tú sabes que las féminas son dulces con uno. Este Oye, tío. con todo y eso, ese tigre yo lo miraba y ese tipo iba y noqueaba, loco. <risa> ese tipo tiene mi respeto para pa toda la vida. Manito, gracias, bonito. Sí, Pero no. Se le quiere mucho de corazón. Tú sabes que yo tenía que venir aquí porque cuando yo él me dijo, Oye, tú sabes, David Rodríguez, yo, coño, sí, yo te puedo con conectar ahí, ese es de lo mío personal. So. Tú sabes, si hay más gente que quieren ahí preguntar, nada más vine a saludar y a dar mi respeto. Ya tú sabes, yo él. Se le quiere mucho, mira, muchas gracias. Dale. I got one last caller. The nobody. What's up, my brother? Yeah, hey, what's going on, man? A double, okay, what's up? Yo, what up, bro? Yo, um, I see you keep talking about like bad promotions, bad promotions. I seen that you were signed to start boxing. It was that was those the promoters you was talking about? You was talking about the Bad I'm promotion. Not, <laughs> I didn't mention any number, any, any names. But the thing is, <laughs> let me tell you something. I have, I have all the promoters, you know what I'm saying? But the thing is, the thing is, let me tell you what it is. It starts, first it starts with the manager. The manager does his job to get you the right promoter. You know what I'm saying? That's how it happens. And then if you don't, if you don't get the right promoter, it doesn't matter what the manager does. But even though it, it's... It's, a, it's, a, it's like a back and forth. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't know who to trust. You don't know. You know when I find out? Let me tell you when I found out. When I, when I started working with ESPN, you find out how much a fight costs. And, yo, I'll be like, yo, what the? These guys were just robbing me blind. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and it's crazy, bro. But I don't want to mention the name. And the thing is, some of the promoters that I had, maybe it wasn't just that they were bad people. It's just that they were also started. They... Like they 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 got the, they got the light because of me, you know what I'm saying? I got promoters to 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 have fights at ESPN. I got promoters to have fights at HBO, to have fights in Showtime. Undermining instead of the promoter making me, I was making them. You know what I'm saying? You mm -hmm. understand what I'm trying to say? Yeah. So that's what happened. Yeah, a lot of people say that about star boxing, so that's why I was like, Nah, I'm, I, I, <laughs> I'm gonna be acting this is what he's yo, talking yo, about. Jody Guardia is my boy. Uh, <laughs> you know I ain't gonna say nothing about Jody Guardia. You know what I'm saying? But I, I did. I respect some, that. You know what I'm saying? I, 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 it is what it is. It's past, and, and that's the only thing that I regret. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't smart enough to stay on top of that. But I didn't know anybody. 
I don't yeah. know any better. And one last thing, um, you fought Lara. How was it like adjusting to like the Cuban style fighter? Like, was that style like frustrating when you fought Lara? Yeah, man, it's frustrating. I'm not gonna lie. It's a very uncomfortable. It's like um even in, even the time that I hit him, like you couldn't hit him very you couldn't hit him with solid. You know what I'm saying? He never really engaged in the fight. So it's very uncomfortable. It gets to a time where like at the end of the fight, I'm like, yo, come on, you're gonna fight or what? But that's the style, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like the name of the game is get hit, hit and don't get hit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, I appreciate you, man. I appreciate you too, bro. Be no good. problem. Good night, y'all. Good night. Good night, my man. All right, that, that's all the callers I got for now, man. Uh, again, I appreciate you, bro. I really do. This, this means a lot to me. Yeah, I'm going to hit Sorry. you up. I'm going to hit you up about some equipment and stuff, all right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like I said, the, take me up on that offer, man. Uh, right. You can hit me up. Hey, man, I'm trying to start off this way. What software? What this? What that? Yeah. Whatever I got to do. If we got a FaceTime while I, for me to help you out, I'm more than willing, bro. Anything for Delvin Rodriguez. Thank you. I appreciate that, my man. You have a good night, man. It was great talking to you. All right. All right. Thank you, man. All Thank right, everybody. That was Delvin Rodriguez. Make sure y'all hit that like and subscribe button. And if you want to buy a Dominican boxing shirt, go to BroWayJoel.com. And go buy yourself a Dominican boxing shirt. I think I think you deserve one. You deserve on this Valentine's Day to buy yourself the red one. You know, buy yourself the red one. Hey, come on, it's Valentine's Day. If you don't got a girl, maybe if you was wearing that Dominican boxing shirt, maybe you would have had one today. But my brother, thank y'all so much for as for those who stood from the end for start to the end. Thank you, thank you, thank you, man. I truly, truly appreciate it. And uh, until next time, guys, peace.